Hi everybody, this is the second lecture for uh, topic 10. Okay, uh, in the previous uh, lecture, you have seen the several uh, concepts uh, related to the preparation of financial statement. Uh, you have learned that you have to, uh, to make sure that uh, Things like growing concern, materiality, comparability, and what else? What else? Um, consistency, accrual basis, etc. You have to make sure that you have uh, to follow the directions provided by the uh, accounting standard. Okay, in, in this second lecture, you will see... Uh, the first thing is you will see about the adjusting entries. I think uh, adjusting entries is the the steps number five in the accounting cycle. You have to do adjusting entries. You after you have prepared a balance sheet for a company. Sorry, a balance sheet or um, not balance sheet. You have to do adjusting entries after you have prepared a trial balance for a company. So let's see, adjusting entries. Uh, the main purpose of doing adjusting entries is to follow matching principle. Uh, remember about the matching principle. The principle said, uh, if you want to calculate profit for, for example, for the year two thousand twenty, you have to match the revenue for year two thousand twenty and expenses for the year 2020 only so the principle uh, says that you have to record the transactions uh, according to uh, uh, the time the transaction happened if when you want when you want to calculate a profit for year 2020 uh, you cannot add revenue from year 2021 or uh, expenses from the year 2021. Uh, also, the reason you have to do adjusting entries is to to correct errors. Uh, Sometimes when you record uh, transactions for a company, uh, error can happen in when you do the general entry or you do the ledger or somewhere in the recording process so uh, when you do the adjusting entries you can do correction to errors uh, that happen during the recording process okay the second point here in this slide is the appropriate adjustments and corrections to mistakes need to be done accordingly to the current trial balance and then the, top, uh, the third point is this is to ensure that the balance sheet, the balance between debit side and credit side is maintained and this might result in a different balance figure as initially recorded. I think you have learned about how to do adjusting entries before. So this is like a revision for you. Okay, these are the typical items related to the adjusting entries. So, the first one is uh, inventories and supplies. So, you have to do some adjusting entries for, for inventories and supplies. Most of the time, the uh, you have to do, uh, you have to record. Uh, for inventories, you have to record the cost of goods sold. And uh, for the supplies, you have to record the supplies expense and also you have to do adjusting entries for prepaid expenses accrual accrued expenses unearned revenue unrecorded asset or receivables uh, unrecorded liabilities depreciation expense and revaluation reserves uh, so uh, companies they have many non-current assets so every year you have to calculate the depreciation. After you have calculated the depreciation, you have to 
to record the the depreciation expense uh, and the accumulated depreciation this is done during the adjusting entry step and then you have to do uh, account uh, you have to uh, to record the allowance for that full debts and bad debt expense and also specific for the accounting for companies you have to record or do adjusted entry for income tax payable if you do uh, accounting record for a uh, sole proprietorship and partnership uh, there is no income tax uh, there is no company tax for them the business uh, does not have to pay tax for sole proprietorship and partnership the owner of the business has to pay personal income tax but the business does not have to pay uh, tax but for companies the company the companies have to pay uh, company tax or corporate tax uh, this is unique for companies only and the last one is you have to do adjust entries for errors if if there is any error in the recording process this uh, at the at this step you have to do the correction okay this is like a revision for you uh, there are four common uh, type of uh, adjust entries uh, okay let's see Okay, these these are the definitions for these four common uh, adjusted entries, and then okay, let's see. Okay, these are the three steps process for adjusted entries. Uh, so the first step when you want to do the adjusted entries is the uh, you have to identify the original entries. Okay, this is. Uh, this is uh, relevant for unearned revenues and prepaid expenses only. Okay, the second step is you have to determine the correct balances for the account at the end of the year. And the third one is you have to do the adjust, uh, adjusting entries in the form of uh, general journal entries. Okay, this is an example one. Uh, for this example is for unrecorded receivable so let's see how to do it uh, a business earns a rent revenue of 500 in 2016 but will not receive the payment until January 2017 uh, an adjustment will be needed what is the adjusted entry okay let's say this is your business your business has rented a space to somebody at the end of the year 2016, you're supposed to receive, uh, you're supposed to, uh, you have rented, the, at the end of year 2016, you have rented the space. And the, the, rent, the rental amount is 500. But you will receive the payment in January 2017. So what should you do? So remember, in accounting, you record the transaction, the revenue transaction, when it happened not when you receive the cash so you have to record the $500 of revenue uh, for the year 2016 even though you do not get the cash yet so how to record that for this example there is no ori original entry so to record that see here in the yellow box you have to record the revenue because the transaction had happened uh, somebody has rented the space in the year 2016 so you record the revenue, credit rent revenue, but you cannot debit cash because you do not receive the cash yet. You have to debit rent receivable, uh, 500. Why you record in account receivable? Because the 500 is uh, that uh, the 500 that you will uh, receive in January 2017 is an asset because your business will get something in the future. So that is an asset. So you use account rent receivable. Always remember you have uh, the adjusted entries is uh, related to either uh, 
expense account or revenue account in this example the the eh, the scenario is is uh, is related to a revenue account which is the rent revenue and then this is the second example unrecorded liabilities okay let's see money tree incorporated is assessed property taxes $1,000 for year 2016 but will not make this payment until January 5th 2017 an adjustment will be needed what is the adjusting entry so you think about this uh, the tax is for year 2016 but will be paid in year 2017 so you think uh, tax is an expense it happened in year 2016 so when it happened in year 2016 uh, it has to be recorded in year 2016. So the adjusting entry is like this. There is no original original entry. See the yellow box. You have to record the property tax expense. It is an expense you debit the, the expense account. Debit property tax expense. 1000 But your this business does not pay the tax yet. The business will pay the tax next year. So it is a liability. Why it is a liability? Because the business has to pay something in the future. So you have to credit the uh, you have to credit a liability account. The liability account is the payable account. For this tax, the name of the liability account is property tax payable credit one thousand. Okay, example example number three prepaid expenses okay now prepaid expenses so first uh, prepaid expenses is it a liability or an asset the answer is an asset it is like your prepaid uh, that you purchase for your handphone you purchase the prepaid today let's say you purchase the prepaid today for your handphone thirty dollar uh, the prepaid is an asset because you you purchase the prepaid today you can use the amount later in the future so it benefits you in the future so it is an asset so for this uh, example let's see on one uh, on 1st of july 2016 a business pays 3600 for one year rents in advance okay this business pay one year rent in advance 3600 for one year rent it covers from 1st of July 2016 to 30th of June 2017. So when the business pay the rent in advance today, let's say the the, uh, the date is today, it is an asset because the business pay today, the business can use the 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 space for one year, for next one year. It is an asset. The business will get benefit from the payment in the future. So it is an asset. So. Uh, the payment made uh, uh, on July 1st, 2016. On December 31st, 2016, the business close account. So, an adjustment will be needed. Okay, the, for this uh, scenario, the adjusting entry to be done is called prepaid expenses. Adjusting entries for prepaid expenses. So, let's see. Uh, when you want to do uh, adjust entry for prepaid expenses, first you have to uh, to know what is the record uh, or what is the general entries uh, that the business uh, do at 1st of July 2016. So when the business uh, pay the 3600 on 1st of July 2016, the record is like this. Debit prepaid rent the original entry is debit prepaid rent credit account cash and there's something wrong with the with the uh, slide here so actually when this business pay the 3600 uh, at 1st of July 2016 the business has to debit account prepaid rents like I said earlier prepaid rent is an asset Asset increase, asset prepaid rent increase from zero to three thousand six hundred. So, so the record is debit prepaid rent, credit account cash because there is a cash out. The company pay, the company pays three thousand six hundred. So debit prepaid rent, credit cash. 
that is the original entry. At the end of the year, at the, at the 31st of December 2016, for this uh, adjusted entry, you have to calculate how much from this 3,600 has been used for the year 2016. Okay, so how to calculate that? So you have to calculate how many months has passed since the business or the company pays 3,600. So after the bis the company paid uh, on July 30, uh, July 1st, the, the company uses the space for 6 months. July, August, September, uh, October, November and December. 6 months has passed. So when the business use the space, it becomes an expense. When the business pay, it is a prepaid. It is an asset. But when the business use the building or the space, it become an expense. So six months has passed. Uh, the total three thousand six hundred is paid for one year, which is twelve month. Uh, at the end of the year, at thirty first of December two thousand sixteen, uh, the building or the space has been used for six months. So six over twelve months times three thousand. 600 so that is the amount that the business uh, related to to the to the use of the space or building so 6 over 12 over uh, 3600 is equal to 1800 okay that 1800 uh, is the uh, the expense So you at the end of the year, at 31st of December 2016, you have to record the uh, rent expense. There's something wrong with this slide. At the end of the year, 2000, uh, 31st of December 2016, you have to record the expense. So you debit uh, rent expense 1,800, credit prepaid rent 1,800. When you pay, the account prepaid expense increases because when you pay, the asset increases. At the end of the year, half of the prepaid has been used. So, at the end of the year, you record the expense. Debit, rent expense, 1,800. Credit, uh, prepaid rent, 1,800. That, that is supposed to be the adjusted entry. This is something wrong with the uh, slide. Okay, example number four, advanced revenues. So, advanced revenues is the opposite of the uh, prepaid expense. So, let's see. 1st of July 2016, a company received 3,600 for one year rent in advance. Okay, this is the opposite. This uh, covering 1st of July 2016 to June 30th, 2017. So, let's say this is your company. Your company rented a space to somebody. On 1st of July 2016, your company received 3,600 from the person who rented the space. This is what happened. Uh, at the end of year 2016, an adjustment will be needed. What is the adjusted entry? Okay, let's see. So before you can do the adjusted entries, you have to know what is the general entry for uh, for July 1st, 2016. Okay, this is the thing that happened on July 1st, 2016. On July 1st, 2016, your company received cash. The amount is 3,600. For something that has to be done uh, in the next one year. Your company received uh, cash 3600 Your company, at the same time, your company has to allow a person to use your building. So it is a liability because you have to allow somebody to do something for your, uh, for your building or asset. So, uh, so on 1st of July 2016, the record is like this. Debit cash because your company received cash. Credit. Credit advance rent. Credit advance rent. 
uh, this some there's something wrong with this like you credit advance rent advance rent is a liability uh, why because you ha your business have uh, has to allow somebody to use a space or a building this is it is a liability so remember this for this transaction or scenario the record is the origin uh, the record at 1st of july is debit cash because your company has received cash and then you have to credit account advance rent you cannot re uh, you cannot credit account rent revenue you cannot record it as revenue because when the the person pay 3600 the bis the person does not use the building yet in accounting when it happened then you can record the revenue so when the person pay 3600 he does not use the building yet he he used the building he uses the building after he pays so when you receive the 3600 you have to record it as a liability you take the cash but you have to allow the person use the building for the next one year so at 1st of july the general entry is credit cash, debit cash credit advance rent or unearned rent and then at the end of the year 31st of december uh, now you have to do the just entry at the end of the year 31st of december you have to calculate uh, how many months has passed uh, how many months the the person has used the building so in this scenario the person has used the building uh, for the period of six months from july to december so six months uh, over 12 months times 3600 so equal to 1800 from the 1000 as uh, from the 3600 of liability and earn rent 1800 has become uh, revenue uh, because six months has passed the bis the person has used uh, the building for six months so the adjusting entry at the end of the year 2016 is you have to record the uh, the rent revenue okay the yellow uh, the adjusting entry is uh, is in the yellow box so actually the adjusting entry is like this you have to credit the rent revenue because because at 31st of December 2016, you calculate and you found that the revenue for year 2016 is 1,800 only. So, to record the revenue, you credit the account rent revenue. And, why you have to credit the account rent revenue? Because revenue increase, you have to credit. So, credit rent revenue, debit account rent advance rent or unearned rent why you have to debit the account uh, advance rent or unearned rent because the account uh, advance rent or un unearned rent is a liability at the end of the year the revenue has increased the liability has decreased uh, at the at first july the your liability is 3600 at the end of the year half of the liability has become uh, revenue so the liability has decreased I believe you have uh, you have learned about adjust entries before because most of you have done accounting courses uh, when you did your diploma and also uh, in school so it, it is just a matter of uh, ref refreshing your memory you have seen this before after you have done all the adjust entries uh, you have to do the then the step number uh, number six in the in the accounting cycle which is uh, preparing an adjusted trial balance the adjusted trial balance is a trial balance prepared after the uh, after you have done the adjusting entries 
the adjusted trial balance the format is same like the trial balance that you have uh, prepared in the step 4 of the accounting cycle it is the format is same uh, it just like uh, it's it just that uh, you prepare the trial balance this trial balance after you have done the adjusting entries okay uh this slide, this slide says it is the trial balance prepared after adjusting entries have been done, okay, and then refer to page three, uh, 307 of the textbook. So this uh, one, page 307 is uh, the, <coughs> the first edition of the textbook. Now the textbook that you have is the second edition. I hope you can check the textbook again and see. Uh, I think now it is in a different page but uh, I'm quite sure that in the textbook there is uh, a section that explain about uh, adjusted trial balance okay after you have prepared the adjusted trial balance you can prepare the uh, the financial statement of a business uh, this is step 7 in the accounting cycle prepare the uh, financial statement uh, there are five components of the financial statement the income statement balance sheet statement of equity statement of cash flow and notes to the account for companies uh, the income statement uh, is called statement of profit or loss and other comprehensive income so companies uh, a company is a, a business that has many transactions and complex transactions. That's why we, uh, one of the reasons we call the income statement for a company as statement of profit or loss and other comprehensive income. Okay, uh, You have to check the textbook for the format of this uh, income statement for company. Later, I will uh, I will um, show you a sample question, and I will show you how to do the adjust entries, and then how to prepare the uh, adjusted trade balance, and also how to prepare the income statement for 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 a company. And then the second thing is you can see in the textbook you have to see in the textbook uh, how to prepare a balance sheet for a company. So for for a company, the uh, a balance sheet uh, balance sheet is called statement of financial position. Okay, please check in the textbook. Before it was in page three hundred and ten. Now I think uh, around around that that number. Uh, and then you have to know for this course, you also have to know how to prepare. Uh, a statement of change, changes in equity a statement of changes in equity this statement shows uh, uh, this statement shows uh, what are the changes in the amount of equity that had happened in one accounting year uh, it was in page 311 before maybe now uh, in the new textbook uh, it is uh, somewhere around that number so you have to use the textbook uh, in the in the textbook there is a sample question uh, so you can follow uh, uh, from uh, the, the example in the textbook shows how to do the adjust entries and then how to do how to prepare a, uh, an adjusted trial balance and then how to prepare the income statement and balance sheet and statement of uh, changes in equity so do not skip this this is very important okay in summary for this topic number 10 fair presentation is assumed to be rich when financial statements are prepared according to the requirements requirements of the relevant uh, Malaysian financial reporting standards okay this is very important 
I think uh, always remember when you prepare a financial statement, you have to prepare uh, a fairly presented financial statement. Fairly presented financial statement, the simple uh, way to explain it is like this. Uh, a financial statement that shows uh, what had happened to a business. You cannot prepare a financial statement that is bias or contain errors or etc. So you have to prepare to prepare a fairly presented financial statement. And uh, a fairly presented financial statement means uh, means that the, when you prepare the financial statement, you have you follow all the accounting standards. And then the second point here is the going concern assumption, the actual uh, equal basis of accounting, maturity, frequency, comparative and consistency are the general features of financial statements that should be taken into account when preparing the statement. So this is very clear. When you prepare the financial statement, you have to, uh, to make sure that the company is going concern. You have to use equal basis of accounting. You have to consider the materiality, frequency, comparative and consistency. <laughs> so, uh, so companies are big businesses. There are many law and regulations uh, applies, uh, applied to apply to companies because they are big businesses. They hired thousands of workers, hundred thousands of workers and maps uh, so they are very important uh, economic entity so uh, that's why when you do accounting for a company uh, you have to do it properly uh, according to the accounting standards and also according to the law and regulations thank you very much you, you, uh, you can communicate with me in the comment section